How do you guys each think of conflict resolution in your business? What are your strategies for preventing conflicts from arising and how do you think about dealing with them? Because I think it's naive to think that there is a client relationship or project that exists out there that is free of problems. Uh, and specifically within our business where you're constructing something that has never been built before. I know that, you know, a custom residential house, there's 80% equivalency from one to the next, but at the end of the day, you're building something that's never been built before um, in shape and form. And there's a degree of figuring it out along the way and problems can arise. So how do you guys think about addressing those, preventing them, any stories you can share that would be good anecdotes for other business owners or operators out there? Oh yeah. Uh, we had a conversation in house this week uh, with one of my project managers about the second you are informed enough to know what's going on and the second you can put together a solution or a proposal for a solution, that's the moment that you have to talk to the client. So as soon as you believe that it's something that needs to be addressed with the client is the moment that you need to be talking about it. There is nothing good that's gonna come from waiting uh, because then it's kicking the can down the road, it's avoiding the conversation, all the things that, you know, God forbid a client find out that you're avoiding talking to them about something or that you've had an error on the site that even if you're actively working to resolve but you haven't addressed with them that was big enough that they need to, to know about it, you know, we, we did something that's gonna cause a six month delay on your house. Like we, the truck fell off the side of the cliff that had all the windows in it and it's been two days and nobody's told the client, you know, something like that. Like they need to know, they deserve to know, they're, they're paying you to keep them informed and the second you don't handle things immediately, it's gonna come across in a negative way, even if there was no negative intention there, even if you're working to resolve the matter. It's as soon as you're informed and you can provide a solution or a path, that's the time you need to talk about it. Yep. Shane, we were talking um, before and, and you mentioned something that actually I think is so true. I think we all, um, we all work really hard to have these systems in place and these processes for our companies and for our clients that work. And the reality is, is at times it doesn't work. Maybe our system didn't break down, but our, something our system was depending on in order to arrive or, you know, I'm sure we've all been faced with COVID the last, you know, couple of years and a crew being all of a sudden they're ready to show up and then someone on that team can't go and the whole team is out, you know? And so it's a, um, do you say that, you know, how do you respond to those, to your clients with, the, with these issues? And I think going to uh, sooner than later is always better. And something that you mentioned that I think is so true is just being upfront and honest. And sometimes I think the level of integrity that we can bring to the job and to our clients when they see just the honesty actually reinforces why our clients work with us. And I think it almost even kind of em empowers us a little bit and our clients see like, holy cow, like these guys are even bringing the bad, you know, these days are, are going to come and they're already working on it rather than just concealing it and making everything always seem like roses. You know, we build these beautiful homes, but there are going to be issues. And I'm sure each of you all do this. You know, we take a moment during that pre-construction phase. It's easy to talk about the good and all how great everything will be, but to take a moment and explain like there will be days that this system breaks down. There will be days when we have something scheduled and something happens. You know, something doesn't arrive on time. Um, someone is sick. Like someone is going to, you know, circumstances happen. Life happens. And, you know, you're hiring us because, frankly, we're going to be able to deal with that. Um, it will take time. We'll let you know how much time. You know, there's going to have to be a solution. But that's, that's what we do. You know, we, we build houses. But we also, we're just managing sometimes hundreds of people hundreds of people's personal lives. We're dealing with vendors, we're dealing with our manufacturers, and, um, and we've gotta be able to juggle that and sometimes have a plan. And, and I really appreciated what you said about actually how, how much our clients can appreciate that, just that realness that we can bring. Um, I think it's also nice to have the solution, like you were saying, Jake, like, I don't ever wanna to go to a client and say, all right, windows aren't coming for six months. And it's like, well, what's the plan? Oh, I don't, I don't know yet, I just wanna let you know. You know, um, but what we will do is say, hey, we just found this out. Even if I don't have the solution yet, it's going to be like, we're going to follow up in the next couple of hours or we're working through this. We've got a couple of alternatives we're looking at that we're going to present to you. We'll um, talk stay, again tomorrow. Stay, stay tuned kind of a thing um, rather than just buying time and just hoping that like when your window order is delayed that long, 
I'm not going to call tomorrow and say, hey, good news, it's, it's actually here. <laughs> it's gonna be you know? it. Um, so rather than just kind of kick that can down the road, I think the sooner you deal with it, the better. One thing that comes up uh, with what you were saying for me is I'm so hard on myself. I want to do such a great job, and it's almost like I hold myself to this standard. Yeah. So when things go wrong, I'm so hard on myself. And I think clients have more grace for us than we give our own, like ourselves. And so for us to admit mistakes to our clients, they're way more um, I don't know, graceful is the, yeah. if that's the word, yeah. then I would even give myself, yeah. you know? So most of the time they're like, oh, okay, well, all right, I'm being flexible, I'm staying flexible, let's deal with it. Thanks for telling me, you know? And so it's yeah. like, oh, geez, why would I, why was I so just, hard on myself? Just the idea that you take ownership for it. Yeah. yeah. Or using the word sorry. Yeah. Like how many conversations do you have with your kids about, you know, you have to apologize, you have to take, so, you, and I never think to say like, you have to mean what you're saying and, and take ownership of what happened because that's gonna make the other party acknowledge it. But I fully understand that in business, that like, I, I am sorry. I, it sucks. I, I'm upset that we're here too. I'm upset that I'm having to have this conversation. Yeah. It's not what we planned for. We don't want it to happen again. I'm bringing it to your attention so that we can move forward. And that idea of having respect for your clients, your clients respecting you and having a good rapport, all these things that we talk about in in this entire roundtable come to have we built a good relationship mm -hmm. and yeah. good relationships can weather just about anything as long as both parties are involved and honest and, and care about what they're doing. I guess as an example though, like you were talking about systems and having all these performance you know, things in place as a business owner, but like certain wires get crossed and some communication doesn't happen. And so it, it happened not too long ago, most recently, a soffit got stained that was not supposed to get stained. It got stained a solid color, it was supposed mm -hmm. to stay clear, whatever. But immediately, my supervisor called me. He's like, oh, you're going to be, oh, my gosh, Luke's going to. He, he showed me the pictures. I got it. Immediately called the homeowner. I was like, hey, guess what? Because I didn't want them driving up, pulling up, and being the first ones to yeah. see that their, you know, soffit had been stained, you know. So, and they were very, I mean, they were like, okay, great, thanks. And you got a solution? Yeah, Good. you're on it. Yeah. 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 There are so many, I could think of 100 instances where something like that could happen. And I mean, I feel like we all probably spend so much time solving problems that don't ever get any recognition for. It's just our job to solve problems without them even being elevated to the homeowner's attention. That's right. But inevitably, there's always a couple that slip through the cracks. Um, and so, yeah, I think the, how you deal with them in the moment um, will kind of, you know, some, someone else, I'm not sure who it was, used the term like building this emotional bank account with a client where if you can kind of invest into that bank account and show them that you want to operate with honesty and integrity, uh, they're gonna try and make naturally that same investment into it. And that's how you can kind of keep a project from going off the rails. Um, I had another experience where first house I built, um, under my own venture, clients moved in, three to four months down the road, I get a call that one of the baseboards was warping uh, and it was in an AV room that had a lot of heat in it, and I had figured, oh, maybe the wood's drying out, it's cupping off the wall. Well, it turns out it was a moisture-related issue, um, and we had to go through a full demo of the room uh, to track what was a three-inch sewer line that had been spiked by a nail. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point during construction, after the plumbing had been charged and inspected and depressurized, a nail had spiked a pipe and it was just enough of a hairline crack that every time they used a shower, let water into wall. Honestly, I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often, but my client in that moment was actually the one who kind of consulted with me because he could tell I was like pretty distraught about it. You know, new venture, first house I commissioned and here's this, you know, remediation that's gonna take significant investment uh, in time and, and dollars. And he said, he's like, hey, I, I deal with this in my own business where he had a term for it, but uh, he was like, you can actually improve customer service outcomes and customer service feedback by demonstrating like how you respond to this issue. Uh, if you kind of make a client, he, he was honestly coaching me in a way, like he recognized like, hey, you're dealing with a, a, a challenge as a new business owner. Um, this is how I deal with it in my own business. And he kind of gave me like this fire to just almost prioritize that above yeah. all else yeah. and just say, hey, Here's my plan. This is what we're going to do over the next two weeks. We're going to go through a complete, you know, mold remediation. We're going to get a good, clean bill of health. We're going to test it, blah, blah, blah. 
uh, and just tried to put all of my effort and energy into it. Uh, and I think, honestly, at the end of the day, it might have left them with a better impression of the business than had that issue not happened in the first place, yeah. to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, it's something that I always look back on that it's really difficult to do to like push yourself through that wall. Um, but if you can kind of muster the energy and emotion to do it, it will pay dividends for your, you know, business reputation in the long run, I think. You know, something that I, I, I want to say real quickly, because I believe that, which is different than maybe like 10 years ago, um, we have a lot more clients that are probably even listening in on these conversations that are kind of, you know, educating themselves before they go into the build process, which I think is great. Um, they kind of get the mindset of a builder a little bit. Um, it's also great for builders to know that clients are educating themselves as they go into it. Um, but Shane, that that really reminds me of a similar you know experience. Um, I will say just for if you know if you're a client getting ready to go into a build, think about your builder. Um, think about like uh, the impact it could have on how you respond to something. Like this is not going to be perfect. Hopefully, you have a builder that executes at a really high level, um, not just the quality of work, but just the, the business administration side of it and keeps you in the loop. But also how you can respond to things, um, I think, can have a huge impact. I've had a client as well that has essentially just like kind of pulled me aside, like can tell I'm really beaten up over something and I'm going to do whatever it takes to fix it and just like handles it in a way that was so graceful that left nothing, left no other reaction for me but to like, we're going to drop everything and we're gonna make this right. And I even told the clients, I can't tell you how much I appreciate how you delivered, like how you're handling this with me. And he was like, well, I can't appreciate how you're handling it. And like, when you have that interaction and that teamwork, it's a huge, it's a huge benefit. And it goes for, I'll say for the builders, value your client, value what they're going through when an issue comes up. Imagine it's your house and you have a nail in a sewer pipe and you've got kids or you have a family in there that now you have a room you can't use that you just paid for you want that to be handled right away. And I think if you both go into it really wanting the best for each other, like you're gonna have an awesome outcome. So I, I just think that uh, how fortunate we can be at times to have clients that also understand we're humans, stuff's gonna happen. Um, at the same token, let's respond and really elevate how we, you know, how we take advantage and take care of those situations when they arise. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jackson Andrews with Jackson Andrews Building Design, and I am extremely grateful to be able to participate in this round table with these awesome builders here. Um, and it's uh, extremely grateful to have a sponsor like Huber Engineered Woods that I think sees the, the benefit in bettering our industry. And um, you know, while today we're talking about a lot of business practices, there's also, of course, just the, the building materials and the building science for what we do and allow us to perform at the, the level we do. And a lot of that is because of, of people like Huber. And for me, it's, it's great to have a company that is constantly, I think, pushing the envelope for how we um, build. Um, no pun intended on envelope with this. But, uh, but for me, it's, a, it's, having, it's having a company that is behind me and knowing that I have easy access to, um, as I may have ideas or things that we could be doing differently, most of the time Huber is already behind it and been testing it and seeing if it's working. So I'm um, extremely grateful for, for Huber's sponsorship in this.